think one of the things that was reaffirmed for me was the power in community. The capability of the people to come together to care for each other and how much they care for their land and their spaces. Please keep doing that, that very important work. You are helping to heal that water all across the land. It's to help people understand what an operator does and also to get to understand what, what, what is needed to, to treat the water. If the person has confidence to do whatever work it is, they'll succeed at it. They're learning skills that haven't been focused on in the community. Yeah, clean up the water is the uh, sources it has here. And also it looks like the land needs some cleaning up too. The water sciences and the traditional knowledge and not, don't, don't think one is more important than the other. We're not gonna improve our situation around water with just one or the other. I learned a lot of new things and I really enjoyed it. It looks interesting. We did a lot of uh, like fun experiments at the lake. They really do enjoy learning about the water. And they really do enjoy like going out on the land, testing the water. With Water First, we received a high degree of training and no matter where we end up in our career and lives, we will benefit from what we've learned here. Water First has a focus on education and training. That's professional capacity building. These are skills that individuals can receive that they can make use of for their entire life, for the benefit of their own professional development and for the benefit of their community. Our water science programming gives them the uh, learning experience, the, the passion, and the, uh, the skills and training they need to become an Indigenous voice in water governance in Canada. And so as a spirit helper, like many of y'all, I say chi miigwech for helping that water heal. It is so important in such meaningful and beautiful work. We at Water First, we work in partnership, we work in collaboration with Indigenous communities to address local water challenges. And we do that through education, training, meaningful collaboration, all right, designing, pro, de designing awesome programs in collaboration with communities and delivering them in communities for communities. Uh, yes, so I'm going to move into a little bit of why water, the need of Water First. I'm sure you know the need, otherwise you wouldn't be here, but I'm still happy to expand on it a little bit today. Uh, one of the big things that we strive to do is to remove the barriers to education and training that exist um, for individuals within Indigenous communities, be they systemic barriers, geographical barriers, social, cultural. We are very mindful of these barriers and, and, and we are thoughtful in the development of our programs in ways that we can address them, we can navigate around them, we can navigate over them, through them, however we need to get around them. And uh, that is something that we care deeply about and that we're very thoughtful about. Um, we are also, uh, one thing that I notice on our team in, in our staff is I've never seen a more caring and supportive group of people uh, when it comes to the individuals that they are training and they're teaching and working with. It is a gift to get to work alongside these people and, and to see, and it makes me so happy to see how individuals, interns, students within our programs are treated, respected, and cared for. It is second to none. Uh, and that's something that makes, that's part of the reasons why our programs have the success that they do are the people that are delivering it. And of course, the people that are doing the programming. <clears throat> um, so that, that in a nutshell is about, goes into the need uh, of, of water first programs. Was it a nutshell? Maybe it was a little too elaborate. I'll find out in the break. Um, <laughs> but for now, I wanted to, uh, we're going to go into moving, introducing our first First guest today. It's going to be Dr. Jeanette Corbier Laval. Um, and prior to her speaking, I did want to mention that she uh, we're lucky to have her as a member of our advisory council. And uh, I, in order to do that, I want to talk to you about what our advisory council is. Um, we work with the the advisory council meets on a on 
I would say generally on a biannual basis, but there can be other meetings and there they provide a critical perspective on in how our programs can most meaningfully engage our partner communities. Um, we get to ask them the, the challenging questions that are stumping us that we can't sit around in this office and answer. And then they're able to give us the not they're able, they're happy to share with us their knowledge and experience in order for us to improve in order for us to uh, make the choices that need to be made in order for our programs to have the biggest impact. Um, so with that, I would like to in introduce one of the members of our advisor advisory council, Dr. Jeanette Corbier Laval. Uh, she's been a member of the council since 2016. She uh, is an Anishinaabe community worker, has dedicated decades to empowering Indigenous women in Canada through her leadership in organizations like the Ontario Native Women's Association and the Native Women's Association of Canada, earning her the Order of Canada in 2018. <laughs> The domine sing don't you bar, could they kick and do them? Me great tendum gee week, me egg, me no longer mumpy, we let the barge ma, we 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 can the main gay knee, no egg of which it can no more going. Good morning to all of you. I'm uh, really pleased to be here today after the introduction by. Dylan and uh, I just realized it's been 2016 it's quite a while ago now I knew it was a few years and I had the opportunity to work with John and uh, his uh, crew all the staff and it's been a really good experience these last few years because I've seen the results I've seen the young people I've uh, been to the graduations and I've seen what is happening within the communities that Water First was working uh, with. And then we look at, uh, at the water and how beautiful the water is. And water, as we know, is the mainstay of us as a people. If we don't have good drinking water, we're not going to last very long. Unfortunately, the same applies to the beasts that uh, the animals that live in the forest and in the air but especially for those uh, uh, beings that are in the water all the fish and all these uh, beings these uh, gifts that we have been given they can survive really really well without us so we are at the bottom of all that uh, creation they would get along really well without us without us we're the ones now who have that role of protecting and doing what we've been taught it is crucial right now especially right now when we look at what is happening in the world uh, josephine the water walker the first water walker started off by walking around the water in the Great Lakes. She started, she was living in Thunder Bay. She started walking there just on the shores of Lake Superior. She did that one year or two years it took. She went all around Lake Superior. Then she went on the following years to all the other big bodies of water, the Great Lakes. And from there, other, uh, other of our indigenous people, the women especially, spread out uh, down into the United States and uh, of course right across Canada. So I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, there is that awareness of our role, our responsibility in protecting the water, making sure it is clean, it is viable, it's drinkable. Uh, Many years ago, especially in our small communities up north, northern Ontario, there were such devastating accounts of our people not uh, being able to access good water to to uh, live every day. And so the mothers had to bathe their babies in water that was full of chlorine. And those babies, poor little babies, they were developing rashes and other other skin irritants, and uh, that's not good. That we, we can't allow that to happen. 
So what Water Force is doing is helping us to learn to operate those machines that will clean that water. And we're teaching the young people because our young people are in our communities. We can't rely on outsiders coming in and having that passion or that commitment to uh, to to maintain that good quality of uh, our water source within our communities. Next, we actually have our next speaker is going to be uh, Spencer Welling, a graduate of Water First Drinking Water Internship Program. Very exciting to have him share his experience with us today. He is currently the operator in training in Magnetowan First Nation and aspires to provide long term support to their family and communities. Ani Bojo, Yigang Pum, Disnakas, Bob Jeshin Dodem, Wasaks and Unjaba. So I'm Spencer Welling, and I'm from Wasoxon First Nation, also known as Perry Island. It's an island about uh, it's an island on Georgian Bay, about 15 minutes from Perry Sound. And what got me interested in the Water First uh, internship was that I just knew I had to be a part of it when I saw the job posting, because like I've always been interested in being part of someone that could, well, being someone that could really take care of the water, really. And it offered me an opportunity to learn skills and gain knowledge for a career that I could feel proud of. Because there are too few Indigenous water operators. It's an issue that needs to be addressed. I wanted to be part of the solution to that problem. And uh, the internship would take place on my home community, which I thought would be an incredible experience. So my time with Water First was amazing, great, incredible. Probably one of the best experiences of my life. All the Water First staff that we met too at these workshops were great. Uh, they taught us so much. The workshops themselves, they were great, great experience for hands-on learning. Uh, like we probably did so much, learned so much about water testing and all that. We had some uh, cultural workshops too, which were really eye-opening as well. And it helped that uh, we had like a, a contact with Water First. Anyone there really, we could uh, just, there were like a text or call away. Like there was a, an incredible amount of support throughout the internship. Um, yeah, so at last, we have another speaker. Last and definitely not least, um, uh, next, I want to introduce Melody Squires, a graduate of Water First Drinking Water Internship, another graduate, and uh, she's here to share her experience today. Melody is a mother, a daughter, an auntie, and a friend, uh, and a friend from Serpent River First Nation. She graduated from Water First Drinking Water Internship this September and has successfully achieved her Class One water operator license. She uh, excelled at passing the rigorous water quality analyst exam and has participated over 200 hours of water operator training outside of the internship. So you're looking at a very skilled professional, an awesome individual, really looking forward to hearing from Melody. My name is Melody Spires and I am from the Bear Clan and I am one of Water First's most recent graduates. One day I was perusing Facebook, like I often do, and came across a posting on my local community page that was looking for community members to participate in an internship that would train participants in water treatment. I thought that this, this was an amazing opportunity for me to be able to give back to my community. Our first day of the internship was July 4th in Sault Ste. Marie, the day after my birthday, and a kid-free week seemed like a pretty sweet deal to me. <laughs> Over the course of those 15 months, our bonds as a group would grow and we would jump through countless hoops to attain what we have today. Every one of us holding a special place on the team, aside from everything we have learned from Water First, we learned a lot from each other. Me with my outspoken passion, Kyle's thoughtfulness, Elijah's optimism, Nigel's conscientiousness, Austin's confidence, Dara's perseverance, Savannah's commitment, Anthony's ambition, Jess's creativity, Javen's curiosity, and Dre's determination. 
If I had the opportunity to do this all over again, I would in a heartbeat. And a lot of that has to do with the amazing team over at Water First, who I'm also proud to consider my friends. The internship has really opened my eyes to the struggles that many communities, First Nations and otherwise face due to the lack of safe water, which truly requires skilled people. We have seen over multiple different tragedies over the years with Walkerton being one of the most publicized and being a driving force in the Safe Drinking Water Act. It is unfortunate that such a tragedy could be a catalyst for change. And this fact would introduce me to a passion within myself to educate and advocate to anyone who's willing to listen. So I sincerely thank every single one of you for being here. It truly means a lot. During the past 15 months, I would learn that there was an extreme need for skilled people within the water industry and also believe that it is very important that this issue is brought to the surface, which is why the work that Water First is doing is vital, not only for Indigenous communities, but also throughout the country. During my time in the plant, I made it a priority to enter the community often to answer questions, open our plant doors to provide transparency and give our members more information that can help them help us as operators and also help in regards to source water protection, education and advocacy. Because it is my belief that when people know better, they're also given the opportunity to do better. Uh, this question is, from your perspective, uh, what is the water first approach to collaborating with Indigenous communities? From your, what does that approach look like from your perspective? Okay, uh, well, from my side, I, uh, and as I said, it's been almost uh, 10 years, I guess, 2016. It's been very respectful and uh, and relevant in that uh, we have been offered as uh, people at the community level, we've been offered uh, technical uh, information, technical advice, skills that uh, could be made available to us at the community level. And this doesn't usually happen. Uh, many of our people, myself, in order to get uh, qualified as a teacher, you have to leave our communities. And as uh, uh, some of the others were talking about, uh, if you have a family already and you have children or you have elders that you're responsible for, it, it's just not possible to leave to acquire more skills that uh, you would like to do. So Water First gave us that opportunity because uh, technicians came and said, look, we can work with you in your community. We can help uh, uh, the members in our community who want to work in the, in the water treatment plants, who want to work with our schools. Uh, how does Water First decide which communities to work with? complicated question. I guess the, the general answer is Water First aims to uh, provide programming to uh, any community that sees the need uh, for, for what we do. And that in practice is we, we the demand, uh, the demand for our programs outstri is outstripped by our, our capacity right now within our team. We are a growing organization, but there is still a demand for our programming that exceeds what we are uh, currently available to do in each of our, in each of our uh, departmental areas. We feel that pressure all, all the time trying to decide, should we visit, um, do, do which visit, prioritizing communities can be very challenging when there is equal need. Uh, going to, we try to, we endeavor to go to remote communities. We don't let, we try not to let geography, we try not to let seasonality determine when we do our work and who we're able to work with. So we, we try to customize our programs as much as possible. And um, yeah, it is, a, it's a challenging discussion that we have to be having on an ongoing basis, trying to see where it is that we are able to, to work. Spencer. What keeps you interested in being a water operator? Well, the fact that like there's a lot of operators that are retiring, like a lot of like indigenous operators are retiring. So, you know, it's kind of crazy that how big of a need there will be for more 
indigenous water operators in Ontario. Like that's just in Ontario. There's so many operators that are aging out and some that, you know, don't want to be operating anymore because, you know, there's it's time. <laughs> so yeah, I want to, I definitely am wanting to get on my certifications and get, get as many as I can learn as much as I can, just so I can feel super confident in my abilities. Uh, Jeanette, can you okay. share your thoughts on how Western water science and traditional water stewardship complement each other in, in, uh, in order to address water challenges? How the two complement each other? Well, I, I think it's obvious that uh, our people uh, knew just from their uh, ancestors and living on the land the best way of maintaining healthy, uh, uh, livable environment and surroundings. And number one is we shouldn't be having so many chemicals that are being poured onto the land, into the water, being fed to animals that we are uh, given to eat. So uh, all that is uh, a big imposition on us. And unfortunately, that's a whole nother aspect that we're gonna have to deal with. But we can ensure that uh, within our communities and those communities that want to have healthy lifestyles, healthy way of living, production of healthy food, that we do whatever is necessary to do that, which is uh, removing those uh, detriments, those chemicals, those uh, uh, other um, additives, I guess, that, that are being uh, put on us. So my next question is, my understanding is Water First is not an indigenous company but works with Indigenous partners and advisors. Is that correct? Um, we do have uh, Indigenous staff. Uh, there's non-Indigenous and Indigenous staff, both within Water First. For example, me, I'm, I'm Indigenous. Um, uh, John Miller, the executive director, he's, I, he often says, uh, I'm a Scottish white guy. Uh, so yes, that, that, I would say that is, that is uh, in that sense, it is correct at the, at the highest leadership level. I do see Water First as an excellent opportunity to show what a constructive, reciprocal, positive, um, mutual, like mutual relationship looks like between Indigenous and non-Indigenous professionals. I really want us to be the, uh, the shining example of that so other organizations can learn from our standard and learn from our practice. Um, so, that, but yes, that is correct. And, and how much of the funding goes directly to support Indigenous interns? The answer is 83% of our funds go to supporting our programs directly. Uh, what do your kids think of what you've accomplished and your career and wh where you are now? Uh, I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, my kids are extremely proud of me. You know what? Like, they are. They, um, they, uh, yeah, they say it all the time. They are extremely interested in what I do. And yeah, uh, they're very proud of me and I'm just as proud of them. So <laughs> you had to get me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, that's uh, so beautiful to hear. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad that you can also be an inspiration for them as well. Uh, I wanted to thank, thank everyone for good, good, good answering these questions on the fly. Thank you again, Jeanette, Melody, Spencer, for making yourselves available to, to answer these questions and to, to talk to the audience. It's, it's really appreciated. I'm sure the audience appreciates it as well. And uh, again, and I want to thank everyone watching. Thank you for everyone attending, continuing to learn more about our work and the, the importance of the these, these challenges, these issues, and all the different uh, meaningful ways that they are being addressed. Thank you.